What's going on everybody, JT here, coming at you with another episode of Pokemon Go, and Generation 5 is finally coming to Pokemon Go. Starting on the third week of the Ultra Bonus Unlocked, from September 16th to the 23rd, we're going to be seeing Pokemon like Clink, Petrat, and Lillipup showing up in the wild for the first time ever, and we might see the uh, starters as well, though they haven't officially said that. And this got me wondering, now that we're getting brand new Generation 5 Pokemon, which ones are going to be regional Pokemon, and where exactly are they going to be located? Now before we dive into these possible new Gen 5 regionals, here's the criteria that I'm basing these predictions off of. One major trait that most of our current regional Pokemon share right now is that none of them evolve. Pokemon like Kangaskhan, Tauros, Heracross, and even Farfetch don't have any evolutions, though some of them do have Mega Evolutions, but I'm not really going to be counting those at this time. But when Gen 4 was released, there was one regional Pokemon added to the game that broke this rule entirely, and that Pokemon is Shellos. It has a East and West Sea form, and we separated it between the Eastern and Western Hemispheres, but this Pokemon could evolve into Gastrodon, and this is the first time a Pokemon that's been regional has ever been able to evolve. But it does make sense that Shellos and Gastrodon were regionals, because in the main series games Diamond and Pearl, they were also regional depending on which side of the continent you were on. The European regional Mr. Mime also technically breaks this rule because it does have a Gen 4 pre-evolution, Mime Jr., though at this current time, Mime Jr. hasn't been added to the game just yet. Mr. Mime should be a regional though because he's a mime in Europe. Makes sense. So now that you know the basic principle and rules I'm going to be using to make this Generation 5 regional list, let's dive into it. Now before we begin, there will be spoilers ahead, so obviously if you don't want any Generation 5 spoilers, click away now. Alright, let's go. Now the first two Pokemon that are going to appear on this list are Sock, the Karate Pokemon, and Throw, the Judo Pokemon. And I'm pretty sure as you look at them right now, you can tell why I think these are going to be regionals. Neither of these two evolve, and honestly they've got the contrasting colors of red and blue, so what I see from this is they're going to put one of them on like the Western Hemisphere and the other one on the Eastern Hemisphere, or maybe they'll even do Northern and Southern Hemispheres, who knows, but that's what I think they're going to do with these two. A funny side note about these two Pokemon is that a lot of people thought these two looked like Bert and Ernie from Sesame Street, and if you know anything about them from Sesame Street, <laughs> Bird got pretty annoyed by Ernie, so maybe that's another way to separate them. The next Generation 5 Pokemon that I think is going to be a regional is going to be the Water-type Pokemon, Basculin, otherwise known as the Hostile Pokemon. And the reason why I feel like this is going to be a regional Pokemon is because this Pokemon has two forms. As you can see, we have another red versus blue situation. We've got the red Basculin with the red stripe, the jagged fins, and the rounded eye, while the blue Basculin has a blue stripe, smooth fins, and a narrow eye. But if you look into the Pokedex, it's said that these two forms are incredibly hostile towards each other, so in order for us to keep them safe, we have to separate them. Now neither of these forms can evolve, and personally where I see them located is either the Eastern and Western Hemispheres again, or possibly Northern and Southern Hemispheres, because again it just seems like another 50-50 split Pokemon, but who knows. Now next up on this list is going to be the Grass-type Pokemon Maractus, otherwise known as the Cactus Pokemon, for obvious reasons. Maractus has no evolutions, and it can only be found in one place in the Generation 5 games, the Desert Resort, so obviously if you want to find yourself a cactus, you go to the desert. So what I'm thinking is that they're going to be putting these in desert biomes only. So like, imagine that you have to go to either the Sahara Desert, the Gobi Desert, or the Mojave Desert. You know, a lot of deserts are around the world, so you don't have to go to one specific spot. But nonetheless, if you want to get yourself the cactus Pokemon, you have to go to the desert. At least that makes sense to me, and that would be really fun if they did something like that. Next up on the list, we have the Flying and Psychic type Pokemon, Sigilyph. And honestly, I have no idea where they're going to be putting this Pokemon, because, I mean, it feels like a regional. I mean, you look at this thing, and it looks like a regional, but where exactly they would put it, I have no clue, because in the Pokedex, it said that it guarded ancient cities, so it would be very neat if you had to go to, like, ruins or something like that, you know, go to ancient sites and stuff like that, but I could see some problems with that, of, like, tons of people flooding these areas and possibly damaging them, so, honestly, if they did that, it would be cool, but on the other side of it, I just don't know where else they would put it. Like, maybe because it looks like, you know, Native American and, like, Central and South American tribal art almost, maybe it would be stuck in those continents only. But again, I have no idea. But if you think you know where it would be, please let me know in the comments down below. Flying in next on this list is the electric and flying type Sky Squirrel Pokemon, Emolga. Now, Emolga is basically Gen 5's Pikachu, as we had Plusle and Minin with Gen 3, and we have Pachirisu in Gen 4, Gen 5 had Emolga. And it's based off of the Flying Squirrel, which is only found in northern parts of Canada, parts in Alaska, and in parts of California as well. So, maybe it's gonna be kinda like Carnivine, where Carnivine can only be found in the southeastern parts of the United States. Maybe Emolga can only be found in the northern western parts of the United States. It'd be a fun thing. I mean, I could see these being with the Pachiritsus as well, so everybody 
anybody who lives in Alaska and Canada, you guys are probably getting another regional, and I think parts of California are gonna get them too, but I'm not sure. Now next up is the pure ice type Pokemon Cryogonal, and as you can tell, it looks like a gigantic snowflake, and personally what I see from this one is I think it's gonna work kinda like how Corsola works. Corsola can only be found within a certain distance from the equator, so what I'm seeing from this one is that it's since it's a giant ice snowflake, it can only be found in the extreme northern parts and extreme southern parts of our planet. So in the north, you can only find it in like northern Canada, Greenland, maybe parts of Europe and Russia. And then in the extreme south, you can only find it in Antarctica, possibly in parts of like Chile, maybe even parts of Australia, even Argentina, you know. I can see it being only there, and so you have to actually explore to get this one. They're not going to be in the most accessible areas, but it'll make it more of an adventure to find it. Another Gen 5 Pokemon that I feel is going to be a regional is the Dragon-type Pokemon Dredagon, the cave Pokemon. And the reason why it's called the cave Pokemon is because you can only really find them in caves. That's where they live. And I don't know why, but I really feel like this thing is going to be found in Australia because, like, it just feels like a rugged, strong Australian creature, which would be sad if they did that because I don't live in Australia and I really like this Pokemon. I love Dredagon, so it'd be sad. But on the upside, it gives me a reason to go to Australia. But let me know where you think this thing would be located. Next up is the normal type Pokemon, Bufalant. And, I mean, it's a big bison buffalo Pokemon. It just makes 100% sense that this would be found in America, in the United States, along with, you know, Tauros. Again, Generation 5 is based off of America, so it kind of just makes sense that this big bison Pokemon would be found only in America, but maybe this won't be a regional, but just kind of feels like it will be. Now these next two possible Gen 5 regionals are some of my favorites, the first one being Durant, the bug and steel type iron ant Pokemon, and the reason why I feel like this is going to be a regional, not only the fact that it doesn't evolve, but it also has a natural predator, Heatmore, the fire type anteater Pokemon, and it makes sense that these two should be separated because it's just like Seviper and Zangoose. They're enemies towards each other, so they were separated. So I just see these ones being a 50 50 split again, either on the east and west hemispheres or the north and south hemispheres. Now, the last two Gen 5 Pokemon that I think are for sure going to be regionals are the two Pokemon known as Carablast and Shelmet. Now, the reason why I feel like these two are going to be regionals is because the Carablasts hunt the Shelmets, so again, we gotta keep them safe by separating them, but they could also have a really fun mechanic in Pokemon Go that no other Pokemon has had in this game as of yet, and that's the fact that these two Pokemon do evolve, but the only way they can do that is if you trade them with one another. So, if you trade a Shelmet with a Carablast, they'll turn into an Excelligore and a Excavalier, both really cool looking Pokemon, and as you can tell, as they were like traded, they kind of gain each other's attributes. Excavalier kind of looks like a Centurion, it looks like he gained the shell of the Shelmet, but then, the Excelligor lost the shell and it turned into some kind of like bug ninja thing. It looks pretty cool. And it would be cool for the first time ever that the only way you can actually get these brand new Pokemon is by like trading them. So after you trade your Shelmet for a Carablast between two players, that's when their evolutions get like unlocked. Now the big downside to this again is that not a lot of people like trading for brand new Pokemon. And again, if these are regional exclusives to like one half of the world and the other half of the world, that means you're not going to probably run into somebody like that unless they're traveling. There's a lot of things that could be wrong with it and I could see people being upset with it. but. You know, there's also going to be events in the future where maybe they're going to switch over or something like that, kind of like how Soul Rock and Lunatone have, you know? So I'm sure it'll happen in the future, but definitely when it first comes out, I can see people not being a huge fan of it. The first Pokemon to show up on the maybe list is the ground and electric type Pokemon, Stunfisk, which, I mean, personally looks like it would be a regional. It has a really good, like, regional feel to it, but it's based off of the Flounder, which is a fish that's found pretty much all the way around the world, both in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, so there's no one place that I could see them throwing this in there, but again, it doesn't have an evolution, and it does feel like it could be a regional, so I could see them just kind of like throwing this somewhere random, or maybe it'll be found all the way around the world, but who knows. Number two on the list is another fish, a pure water type Pokemon, a Mola Mola, which is based off of the Mola Mola, or the giant ocean sunfish. And again, this is a fish that's found all the way around the world, both in tropical and temperate oceans. So unless they just decide to throw this in some random spot, I just, again, probably see this one being a, you know, worldwide Pokemon, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a certain spot that's, like, famous for having sunfish, but I'm not aware of any. Number three on this list is going to be the normal type Pokemon Adeno, the hearing Pokemon. And 
This one is basically the Chansey of Generation 5. Like, instead of Chanseys being in the Pokemon Centers, it was Audino instead. So, just because of that, I feel like this Pokemon might just be all around the world. It doesn't have an evolution, though it does have a Mega Evolution, Mega Audino, which gains the Fairy Typing, which is pretty neat. But, yeah, something about it makes me feel like this isn't going to be a regional, but maybe I'm wrong. But again, I can't think of anywhere where this would specifically go. But if you think you know where that would be, please let me know. And the fourth and final Pokemon that I'm putting on the maybe list is the Ghost and Water-type Pokemon Frillish. And the reason why it's possibly going to be a regional is that it does have two forms. The males are blue and the females are pink. And they do have, you know, some physical differences to them. But gender was never a thing for, like, making a regional in the past. And I don't see them doing it this time as well. Because it's not like this is, like, East and West Sea. It's purely just the gender that defines the colors, so I don't really think that's going to be what it causes it. Plus, it does evolve, so I don't know. I just feel like this one's not going to be one, but I could be wrong, so that's why I'm throwing it on the list. And that's my list of all the possible Gen 5 Pokemon that may become regionals once they're finally introduced into Pokemon Go. But what did you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think I was right with which Pokemon would be regionals and where they'd be located? Or do you disagree with me? Do you think I missed one? Do you think I misplaced them? Please let me know in the comments down below. And with all that being said, this is going to be the end of the video and if you've enjoyed it and I really hope you have please smash that like button for me show me some love subscribe to the channel hit the little bell icon so you know when I upload and if you really enjoy my content you can help support the channel on patreon link in the description below and with that being said I'll see you in the next one